What's going on guys? It's Scott Crow from Ocean State Aquatics and as we've grown into New England's largest coral distributor, I want to introduce you guys to our new coral specialist, meet Chris from OSACorals.com. Hi, I'm Chris from Ocean State Aquatics and I'm here today to talk to you about reef chemistry. The key to keeping a long-term reef tank is keeping your water chemistry stable. The ocean is a very vast large quantity of water that's pretty much never changing. We want to mimic that inside of a box in our living room or our bedroom. Really hard to do? No, not so much. We at OSA can help you through that process no problem. A lot like many of you, chemistry is not the first word I want to hear when it comes to keeping my reef tank alive. Luckily, we don't have to worry about any of those things that we learned in high school and college, molarity, molality, atomic masses, forget all that stuff. We're going to base this around the salinity, the pH, the alkalinity, the calcium, the magnesium, and the trace elements. A good starting point is maintaining a stable salinity. Now whether you're using this as your top off for evaporation or when you do water changes and making sure that your salt is right on, salinity is key. Maintaining a 1.025 salinity is uh, replicating the ocean water. Anywhere from 2.3 to 2.6 is reasonable, but that 1.025 mark is a good target. You can test using a simple refractometer hydrometer, extremely easy to do, and you don't have to worry much about actually testing the water. pH of the water is also very important. pH of 8.3 is ideal, however anywhere from 7.8 to 8.4 is perfectly acceptable. pH is going to be directly in balance with your alkalinity. So as long as your alkalinity is being maintained, that pH will also be in check. Alkalinity is the measure of the bicarbonates that are in the water. It's not an actual element, it's not on the periodic table, but it's probably the most important element. Many of you have asked me questions about pH and alkalinity, and alkalinity is probably the number one question I get on a daily basis. The alkalinity of natural ocean water is about 7 dKH. In most home aquariums, we're running 8 to 10 dKH, sometimes even higher, 12 dKH. It doesn't really matter what you're actually at, it matters keeping it stable. This DKH also is going to have to be in balance with your parts per million of your calcium. So the higher DKH, the higher your calcium, the lower your DKH, the lower your calcium. This is a nice even ratio that's consistent throughout the ocean and should also be replicated in most reef tanks. A coral skeleton is made up of calcium carbonate. The calcium part of this is from the calcium and the carbonate is from the bicarbonate which we talked about for the measure of alkalinity in the water. When these two elements are in the perfect balance, they can mend together to form this coral skeleton. When they're out of balance, they don't mend together very well. If you have too high of an alkalinity, your calcium will actually precipitate out, meaning fall apart in a fall out of solution. This will give you a very low reading of calcium on your test kits. If you have too high of a calcium in your water, you also will have find that you have very, very low alkalinity in the water. Some of you may have seen precipitate in an aquarium before. If you ever see your heater or a pump, something that produces a little bit of heat, has a little bit of crusty substance on it, that's calcium after it falls out of solution. It's not really a big deal as long as you keep your magnesium in your tank where it should be. Now a low magnesium will actually not allow binding of calcium and carbonate to happen. So you'll get the calcium falling out of solution and the higher DKH. If your magnesium is in balance, you won't have to worry about any of these levels falling out of solution unless they're extremely far out of whack. So this balance that I'm talking about, it's basically just a ratio between them. For 420 parts per million on calcium, you want to have about 7 dKH. If you go any higher, 460 parts per million on calcium, go up to about 10 dKH. In turn, the magnesium at 1280 will be about three times the calcium amount. So if you have a higher calcium, you want to go higher on your magnesium to keep it at that three times ratio. Depending what kind of reef tank you're keeping, some of these elements may not come into play as much as others. Say you have a heavily stocked SPS tank, you're going to go through alkalinity like crazy, calcium's going to drop, you're going to have to dose magnesium, all these things are going to take place very fast. You could have a tank full of soft corals with leathers and mushrooms and zoanthids, and these elements won't be depleted as fast, but maybe you'll still see your alkalinity dropping. It's okay, you can dose just that. You just want to bring it back up to be in a nice, even balance. Then we have trace elements. These are things you might not usually measure for, but also very important. Things like strontium and potassium are good for color and growth of the corals. Things like iodine in the tank are going to keep your invertebrates healthy, such as crabs and shrimp. Then you have iron. This is very good for your 
photosynthetic zoanthellae algae that's within the coral keeps those colors nice and vibrant. So all these things are usually in your salt mix. Doing routine water changes is enough to replenish them. Having to dose them separately requires some intense testing. So doing routine water changes is probably your best bet. So with all this information about keeping your levels in balance, you may wonder, how do I know if my levels are high or if they're low? If you're not testing at home, feel free to bring some water down, test it for you. We can put you on a maintenance program. If your calcium's too high or your alkalinity is too low, we can give you information. And we also have products. There's everything from Aqua Vitro to Fritz, and they all make a certain doser. So you could have alkalinity, calcium, magnesium, your trace elements maybe even. All of these things can be taken care of here at OS OSA Corals. So if you want to have the most colorful, vibrant, healthy reef tank around, step one, keep those parameters in check. Step two, get on down Ocean State Aquatics, because we have the best coral to offer in New England. And as always, keep on reefing, baby. <laughs>